point about the constitutional court judgment is that the court has done its work. The court has done what courts are meant to do. It did so in a way which was fearless, in a way which was unwavering, and also in a way which was accessible to individuals regarding to citizens about the powers of um, the, the public protector and also her remedial action being binding, but also around our constitutional values. And I think the one thing that was really good about the judgment was, in fact, Mohueng Mohueng's um, the, the sort of section part at the beginning where he talked about our constitutional values and what, in fact, um, it means to be a state governed by the rule of law. And so we know, of course, that the politics is going to, we're going to come up against the politics, which indeed we've already seen, and I'm going to talk about that now. And the, the issue here is that the court has done its work. And Parliament, of course, we, we've seen that the Speaker herself is in a position where she is entirely conflicted. Not only is she the, the chairperson of the ruling party, she also is somebody with very high political ambition. And so therefore, what one is, is witnessing really is somebody who um, should not be in, in a position, um, the weekend reports have it that she is saying that there are certain individuals within the ANC who've approached her uh, for to, to run as, as president of the ANC. Now that might scare some of us, but, but certainly she, I would argue that she is unable to preside over the House in a way which inspires confidence. And indeed, during the impeachment debate and her refusal to recuse herself, we saw that she was very able to, as usual, to put the interests of the party and the president above the interests of the country. Because if she had put the interests of the country first, she would surely have recused herself because she was directly implicated um, in the constitutional court judgment. And so we have the politics. And what we've seen over the past week has been a rallying around President Zuma. And this comes also against the backdrop of, of course, the Guptas and various scandals um, regarding the Guptas. And a lot has been said this past week and two weeks around issues of state capture. And I think it's important that we um, sort of think carefully about um, what state capture actually is. Um, and Joel Hellman, who is somebody who's written quite a bit about this with Daniel Kaufman from the World Bank, he describes it as the efforts of a small number of firms or groups of people to shape the rules of the game through, to their advantage um, through illicit and non-transparent provision of private gains to public officials. And so we know that the Guptas would fall precisely into that category. And we've seen this past week very, um, you know, startling allegations around the president, around state capture, around the influence of the Guptas. And we've now seen that um, many, many ministers are seeming to make their way to Dubai. The first point about the Guptas, I think, is to say that it's highly unlikely that this very powerful family who seems to hold a great deal of sway over the president and whom the president needs um, is suddenly going to up and leave and abandon South Africa because of constitutional court judgment. The point of Gwedi Mantash, who finds himself in an extremely difficult position, um, has asked people to bring evidence of state capture very curious when it seems like the newspapers are full of it on a daily basis. And so what this briefly, what all this means is the ANC is a party divided. President Zuma, um, his apology in my view is a non-apology. Um, he was, when he talked about the constitutional court judgment, we all knew already that he was not going to resign. The, the divisions within the ANC are far too deep right now for it for a recall to happen. And Gwedi Matash was exactly right. And I think it was very telling that he said that if the ANC recalled President Zuma, it would tear the party apart. And that's probably the most honest anybody has been with us in, in the past while, because he's absolutely right. The balance of forces within the ANC and not um, like they were during the time of Tabo and Becky's recall. Um, and so he, he, President Zuma still holds an enormous amount of sway, sway within the party. Having said that though, it is a moment where we are seeing great shifts in South African politics. And so the constitutional court, how I see it is sort of an incremental shift away from President Zuma and sort of various nails in the coffin. But the president is not going to go and he's not going to go quietly. He is 
there are 789 charges against him dating back to the arms deal. There is a messy situation within the prosecuting authority which has to be cleaned up. Um, if it was, if there was going to to be an orchestrated deal, it would have to be to get rid of President Zuma. It would have to be something which is stitched together very carefully. I don't think there is enough consensus within the ANC uh, with regard to that. Having said that, the the patronage networks also run so deep, which is why President Zuma can be so glib um, in the past two weeks. But having said that, I think that he is there is a, a feeling that the president is under tremendous pressure. Um, Mukabisi Jonas's um, revelations have shaken things. It's caused an uneasy sort of truce within the national treasury. The last few points I want to make is that, of course, the ANC is relying on, they're taking a very short-term approach to all of this, because, of course, they are relying on the fact that President Zuma will be an electoral asset. And no doubt the ANC will use its considerable elect electoral machinery to try to, um, to, to get the vote out and so on. It is vulnerable. It's more vulnerable than it has ever been, particularly in urban areas and in metros. And this is a very interesting, I mean, there was there was a conversation this week about um, President Zuma and also his way he talked about the fact that we need to solve problems in the African way. And President Zuma has always been a president who has been deeply uncomfortable with a modern constitutional democracy. And this translates as well into who his constituency is. And this, the ANC of Jacob Zuma is an ANC which is, is rural. It is an ANC which is traditional. It has It's not a coincidence that the president talks about clever blacks, about the clever one, the only one. It's a remarkable statement for a president to make, but he's done that several times over. And so the President Zuma will spend a lot of time, no doubt, in rural areas with traditional constituencies and in a sense seek to undermine the constitutional court judgment and all the urbanites and the, the old wings, wing of the ANC and the, the more traditional wing, um, which is saying, um, with traditional constitutional values, I would say, saying that the president should go. And that urban and rural divide I think we're going to see some of that playing itself out in the local government elections. And that's why um, Johannesburg, for example, is, is so important to the ANC's fortunes. And the question there is whether um, votes will go from the ANC and where will they go, to the DEA or to the EFF? And um, the EFF is going to be an interesting um, game changer in the election, possibly. And so I think the important um, takeaway is that it's going to be this change and the shift from a Zuma presidency is going to be one which is incremental. It's also going to be a drawn out battle. It's going to be extremely messy. In 2005, Helena McClante said he was secretary general at the time, and he said that the cancer of corruption is eating away at the ANC and eating away at the party. So even if President Zuma goes and whoever takes over, and that speculation, you know, if a week is a long time in politics, well, the ANC conference is only in 2017, and there'll be many people who will be throwing their hats into the ring. And getting rid of President Zuma is, is one part of that puzzle because the patronage networks run deep, but also the the immaturity of members within the ANC, you know, why are people joining branches, the, the weakness of the branches, for example, that shows an organization which is exposed and an organization really which on the ground is weak, but manages to kind of surge and rally at, the at election time. What we have also seen, and the last point I want to make, is that civil society has is seeming to find its voice again. And we've seen gatherings of civil society organizations um, over the past while, and also business. Um, of course, they've both been, uh, you know, civil society organizations have had, it's it's been a difficult road, I think, to try and um, craft their path. But but certainly, it will be part of the, the ongoing sort of opposition um, to, to President Zuma. And Business, of course, has played an important role in the past while in terms of voices when Nflantla Nene was fired, but also in trying to freeze out the Guptas, in a sense. But President Zuma also has the ability to go to the heart of the country and the heart of the constituencies and of people that whose voices are not heard um, within civil society. And 
in the general election, the last point I want to make, Nkandla wasn't an issue. Um, Jesse Duarte was probably right. You know, did people really um, care about this looming scandal over the president? And so I think it remains an open question as to whether Nkandla is going to have an impact on the local government elections, or will people simply say, I'm voting for the ANC, President Zuma will eventually go, but my party is my party. And so the electorate, um, as ever, provides us with, with more questions than answers. And so it will be interesting, it's going to be a long and messy road ahead. And the president has a lot to lose. And therefore, um, as I said, he's not going to go quietly. But the court has done its work. And I think it's important for us to, to acknowledge that um, and, and not to confuse the politics with the legal, the, the political stalemate which we seem to be in, although we have seemed to have a chipping away um, at, at the Zuma a sort of edifice, but not to confuse that with the job that the law has done. And I think I'll leave it there. Thank you.